<laughs> what's up everybody what's up MGTOW so this is going to be part two of the feminism versus capitalism series and it's going to be on artificiality egalitarianism misogyny and misandry in society now this video might not seem connected to capitalism at first but like I said in a previous video capitalism itself is not fully a culture and we can't really examine capitalism without examining the legal culture that surrounds capitalism, including the enforcement of contracts, who pays for what in marriages and in divorce, and also just the social parameters in which men and women live in society. Now, I would go as far as to say that society has become so misandrist, so gynocentric, that the idea of males requesting some semblance of egalitarian treatment in society is itself considered to be misogynistic. I think that egalitarianism between the sexes is the first step towards the transhuman agenda. Expecting women to be attracted to men that don't have some advantage over them is the same as expecting men to be attracted to women with beards and flat chests. The trend of hypergamy is not a social construct, it's a biological one. Women have been free to work and marry who they want for close to 60 years at least in the West, and yet the hypergamous marriage rate is still at close to 70%, even though women in many industries earn equal or more than men. If you don't believe in hypergamy, just go ahead and lose your job and tell me how your wife treats you after that. So let's look at a blatant case of misandry in society, which is childbirth. So a woman in society can go to a bar, have unprotected sex with the first man she sees, get pregnant, and then have the state, read, other men, pay for her housing, food, and so on. She will never see the inside of a jail, be forced to work, or even have anyone say anything negative about her. If, as egalitarians claim, we should have some mechanisms in society to artificially protect people from nature, these mechanisms should offer the same protections to everyone, regardless of race, religion, sexuality, or gender. Yet if this were the case, then first off, no man should ever see the inside of a jail for failing to pay child support, since women will never see the inside of a jail for failing to pay child support. But quite the contrary, if things were equal, quote unquote, then the state should also pay for this man's home, food, and so on, while also guaranteeing him 50-50 parental rates. But we all know you don't agree with this. In this instance, you agree with me that the man initiates sex and is responsible for the creation of children. And also, the fact is that you don't agree that men should be provided for by the state for children they have fathered. And this, in this one instance, proves that you don't agree with sexual egalitarianism. So just stop fronting and acting like you do. My second case is the case of marriage making it virtually illegal for a man to lose his job, whilst at the same time making female infidelity a profession. What's this you say? No, that's just hyperbole? No, really, think about it. If a man loses his job and cannot find another job and his wife divorces him, he could easily find himself imprisoned for failing to pay child support or alimony. Now, typically in society, when you end up in jail for something, that thing that got you in jail is typically considered illegal. So you can use whatever flowery language you like about the circumstance, but that doesn't change the reality of the situation that going to jail for something means that it's illegal. So therefore means that a man losing his job while married could technically be considered illegal. Meanwhile, marriage makes female infidelity into a job. Now I'm not saying that infidelity should be illegal. However, there's a difference between legal and a job. If you go for a jog at night, that's legal. It's legal for you to go jogging. 
if you're an Olympic marathon runner who gets paid to go quote-unquote jogging, that's considered a profession. So in the case of no-fault divorce, the woman who cheats on her husband actually gets compensated with half of the man's property and custody of his children, thereby making female infidelity a job within itself. So these things are not sounding so egalitarian now, are they? And in fact, it's starting to sound quite misandrist or prejudiced against men. The last case I'll make is the laws surrounding single male fatherhood, specifically when it comes to the social and legal attitudes towards surrogacy, ectogenesis, aka the artificial womb, and cloning. The laws surrounding surrogacy are non-binding, and at any time the surrogate mother can back out of the contract, keeping custody of the child, while even unwilling fathers are legally bound to pay child support or face jail time. The laws, because that's what we're talking about when we're discussing egalitarianism, favor women in all instances of childbirth. So if you support the current system, you cannot call yourself an egalitarian. And in fact, you are a misandrist. So on one hand, the man must always pay for the child, no matter the circumstances, even in cases such as a female teacher raping a 13-year-old boy who is then put on child support when he turns 18, or a woman taking a condom out of the trash after sex. When the use of a condom shows a clear intent that the man does not wish to impregnate the female. But on the other hand, a woman who goes out to have sex with a clear intention to get pregnant without the consent of her partner is given use of state force to then force her unwilling partner to pay her and also other males in the system to pay for her child. These cases are the complete opposite of egalitarianism. And the fact is, it's clearly misandric. But if you believe in any of these cases or that you support these type of laws, you yourself are a misandrist and you're against men. And if you're a man, that makes it even worse. I can understand why women would be misandrist, but if you're a man and you support this, then that's insane. So even if you did believe that hypergamy and females giving birth is only a social construct due in part to prehistoric males' physical advantage over women, then you should also be in full support to males accessing cloning artificial wombs and also creating a solid, legally binding surrogacy contract. Since women giving birth is just a social construct supported by time and evolutionary pressures, and that science and the government should be there to alleviate any evolutionary or social constructs, women have been forced into by men, then the evolutionary and social pressures that men have been forced to, basically to chase women around and try to get them pregnant, should also be alleviated by the state by supplying men with welfare so they can clone themselves and then they don't have to work but rather can stay at home and raise their clone child. Because if you support egalitarianism, you would support this too, right? Right? Well, that's all I got for this video. Tune in for the next part. And other than that, have a good day and go MGTOW.